Hey, Waukee Community Church, Pastor Dave here, and uh, I am so sad that we can't be together in person this morning, uh, our leadership. As I mentioned in the email that you received yesterday, I uh, prayed long and hard about this, and in an abundance of caution, we wanted to make the right choice to love our neighbors. And so, but we also want to love God, which means opening up the Word of God and looking at this Word together. And just because we can't be together doing that, we still want to leverage um, electronic communication to be able to do this. And so today, this morning, we're going to take a pause from our Luke series and look at a simple verse from the book of 2 Timothy. And so gather your family around if you have your family there at home with you as you are uh, potentially uh, uh, keeping your social distance from others. And uh, grab your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy, and gather everyone around as we're going to look at this text together. Now, first of all, I just need to introduce you to something that I haven't really paid too much of attention to before. But um, here they are, Clorox wipes. Uh, these have been in our office for a long time. Uh, and I haven't probably used them very often. Certainly not as much as I should, anyway. And uh, But I have these out now. I think I've wiped down every surface in my office and every handle and, uh, and, uh, and making good use of these. And it just occurs to me that as these have flown off the shelf, as you know, everyone has, has well documented, there's no toilet paper left in the world, and uh, everyone is going crazy. My wife went to Hy-Vee the other night about eight o'clock and it took her 20 minutes just to check out um it's like the world is losing its collective mind is a phrase i've heard and uh, everyone is fearing the unknown and that thought led me directly to one verse of scripture second timothy chapter one verse seven grab your bible grab your phone uh if you're on your computer uh open up another window and just google second timothy one seven but I want to talk about it, and I'm going to use a high power media here at Waukee Community Church, all our technology, to just show you this verse. 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but rather one of power, love, and of sound judgment. Now, as you look at this verse, the, the first thing I want to point out to you here is just this word right here. Fearfulness. Fearfulness. God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness. Uh, this world is fearful right now. Our, our country is fearful of what could come. And you know, um, we have no need to be fearful because we know the God who is sovereign and in control. Now, in the context of this book, 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter. It's his last letter that he wrote before his death. And, and, and Paul is getting ready to leave this world. And he wants to make sure Timothy knows everything that he needs to know. And so he's writing this down. And one of the issues in 2 Timothy is that Timothy is fearful. Timothy is the pastor. He was Paul's protege, and he's pastor at the church at Ephesus. And clearly, Timothy is having all kinds of problems. And, and I think in 2 Timothy, as you read it, you'll discover that Timothy wants to quit. He's tired of being a pastor. He's tired of leading this church. He's tired of the conflict. He's tired of people challenging him with heresy. He's tired of people arguing and fighting. He's tired and he's worn out and he's fearful and he's ready to quit. That's what Timothy was afraid of. I don't think it takes much uh, for us to think about what people in our world are afraid of. Uh, people are afraid of death. I mean, the idea that this virus would get out of control, that COVID-19 will take over as if COVID-19 is in control, but it's not. God is in control. And so while we are responsible and use appropriate caution and are good members of our society, um, and while we do all those things, we have to remember that we don't have to fear because we know the God 
who controls all disease. In fact, uh, one of the lines uh, from one of my favorite songs that we sing on Sunday, Where O Grave, Alina introduced that song to us and I love it. And one of the, uh, the lines to that song is, When facing death, I need not fear, I have this hope secure. I love that line. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, when Jesus died and, and then defeated death and rose again, he defeated sin and the effects of sin. Ultimately, all sin leads to death. And Jesus defeated that. He's our Savior. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of any disease or any death. And we know this. What are other things people are afraid of? Well, I know that the, one of the first things I checked uh, last Wednesday was and I got an alert and I saw that the stock market was tanking. And I just thought, had this thought to myself, what, <laughs> what little I'm worth, it's going to be soon worth about half of what it was. Um, there is this tendency that we have, as, as I think as American Christians, is that we tend to rely on our financial portfolio. I think that we have gotten way too dependent as a culture on ourselves and on our finances and our savings account or our what debt we can leverage. I think there are times when we've gotten way too comfortable. And at moments like these, we remember that our comfort is not in an economy or in our savings or in our ability to leverage debt, or in our, the security of our job, our comfort is not in that. Those things just lead to fear. Our comfort is knowing the God who owns everything. And so in the middle of this fearfulness, we need not fear. The second uh, word that, that Paul says here is he says, rather, God's not giving you a spirit of fearfulness, but rather power. Uh, look at this word power here. This word power is a cool word. It's the Greek word dunamis. And, and you can imagine much later on uh, somebody named dynamite after that Greek word. That's how powerful that word was, dynamite, um, dunamis. It's this idea of a power. What is the power that Paul's referring to there? This powerful thing. What is it? Well, it's the resurrection of Jesus. This is the power that we have. We don't have to be fearful because we know the power of a God who could defeat even death. And, the, and this is the beauty and the power of how being agents of the kingdom of God through our faith in Jesus Christ, we have this power. Where does this power come from? Well, this is the good news, the gospel. And so when you want to know what power you have, why don't you have to fear? Well, you don't have to fear because you know that, that Jesus Christ died in your place. This gospel that I remind you of every single week, this gospel story, this message, that what we believe, we have placed our faith in a God who died for our sins. When we couldn't come to him, he came to us. Don't forget it. Speak it to each other. In, in these moments where you're with your family and maybe as things go forward and, and if this uh, COVID-19 uh, grows to be a greater threat to our, our society as, as some would imagine, and if this happens, we, we need to remind each other of the gospel. And it's the power of God through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And this is the thing that we need to remind each other of. Let's never give up reminding each other of the great power of the gospel. This is all of our hope and our faith is in Jesus Christ. God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power. And the second word here is love. Look at that word love. That's the Greek word agape. Uh, he's given us a spirit of love. This is a powerful word. Um, this idea of, of love, first, and, first of all, I think Paul has in mind that in the body of Christ, the spirit of love is one we have for each other deeply. This is one reason why I grieve that we're not together today. Um, I, I grieve that because there is a power in the love of Christians being together. 
It's this powerful fellowship. And so this love that he talks about is a spirit that God has given us. And so what I want to you to remember that love, as we often say, works itself out in action. So instead of huddling in fear, what we do then is realizing the power of the gospel, we utilize the love of God that he's put in our hearts to give that to others. And so I just wonder today, how has God in this crazy time we're in, how has he called you to love someone? Well, first of all, in our church, I'm already hearing people say, Dave, if there's anything you know that can be done, I'm on it. I'll do it. Uh, I know that for each other, we care for those who are at high risk. Um, we, we know that there are certain people in certain groups, certain ages, certain people with medical conditions that are higher risk in this COVID-19 than others. And as, as Christians, if you can get out, if you can run to the store for someone who needs you, do it. Uh, Let's be the body of Christ to each other. Those who can't provide, those who can provide for those who can't. Uh, who can you reach out to? Who, who in your family? Do you need help? Ask. Ask someone to help. This is a beautiful thing about the body of Christ is uh, I guarantee if you ask someone in our church for help, they'll be on it because this is the kind of fantastic church we have. We have this great community of people and we're a small enough community that we know each other and we can love each other and we need each other now more than ever. And that's a, another point that I want to make in this whole piece as we talk about love as we talk about the love of, of Jesus in our hearts that we have for each other, is that the tendency in this, if this isolation that we have to keep grows more and more, if it grows greater, if it does, one of the ways that God can use that is, is in our hearts, we need to be more intentional about connecting with each other. And so use technology, pick up the phone, call people, connect. If you have a, a small group that's not meeting right now, uh, make sure you're texting them, communicating with them. Use FaceTime, use Instant Messenger, uh, use Facebook video. However you need to do that, do it. Utilize technology. Uh, I always say that technology is not bad. Um, it's what you do with technology. It's not good or bad. It's, it's amoral but what you do with it. Use technology to our advantage. Make sure you're connecting with other Christians in the body of Christ. Um, as this goes forward, one of the things I visited with our children's ministry staff about is they're going to send you ideas, ideas of what you can do with your kids to keep them engaged with the Word of God, um, especially if they end up being uh, home on spring break this week and they're going stir crazy. I know, um, I think Brenda and Martha are going to send out some ideas for you, ways that you can utilize your time uh, in that. Um, and as adults, we need to do that too. We need to be connecting with each other. And so if you have a life transformation group or a life group that's not meaning, be connecting, be intentional, figure out how to show each other love, even in rem keeping your, uh, you know, six foot distance that everyone talks about. However you can do that, we have to be intentional. Um, and then the lastly, the thing on love is it's not just love in the body of Christ, but this world needs the love of Christians more now than ever. Uh, this is one of the things our leadership talked about uh, in this whole thing is that um, we are ready, if needed, to love our world by canceling a service so that we don't um, spread this potentially, this disease further. Uh, we're ready to do that. But we're also ready, our leaders are, if we need to, to jump in and get our hands dirty and and put ourselves even at risk if, it, if the love of Christ needs it. The world around us needs to see this kind of love from Christians. And so be ready. Be ready. Evaluate the risk. Think about it. Engage. Look around for opportunities to make the gospel of God look really good. The ver there's a verse in, in Titus chapter 2 that encourages uh, us to make the gospel of our God attractive. And now more than ever, we have a chance to do this to the world around us. And then the last thing that Paul talks about here in the last word is he tells Timothy, God has not given you a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, 
and of sound judgment. Uh, you guys, we, we can't lose our minds. We cannot lose our minds. Um, so there, there are two pi- ki- kinds of people, right? There are people who um, are very comfortable with taking risk in this whole uh, disease environment, COVID-19 environment. Um, there are people who are very conscientious about spreading germs. And, and, and there are people on both sides of that thing. And whatever we do, we as Christians need to have a balanced approach to this. We don't want to be so cavalier that we don't say, I don't care if I get sick and I don't care if I infect everyone else. We don't want to have that side of it. We also don't want to have this side where we just cower in our rooms in terror and fear and never interact with anyone. Uh, As somehow as Christians, we have to have a sound judgment. And that is God has given to us. He has given that to us in his Holy Spirit. And so don't lose your mind. Don't lose your mind. Um, Engage. How can you? And this world needs to see Christians who are engaged in the world around us. This world desperately needs Christians who have sound judgment. And so as you interact with people, maybe everything in your work has moved to uh, Zoom and virtual conferencing Guess what? As you as you exhibit sound judgment because the Holy Spirit is leading you in this, uh, you are going to be a bright and beautiful witness for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So let's keep our heads. Let's use sound judgment as we move forward. For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. What I want to encourage you guys to do now is uh, as we, as I wrap up this time, um, we don't have any, uh, I don't have any, like, I'm not going to sing you a song. We're not going to worship in this way. But in the, earlier in the email, I did send you a link to a song you can play on YouTube. Um, or you can uh, just look up some of your favorite worship songs on YouTube. And just take a moment and pause and quietly and listen and maybe engage in worship. Uh, and then spend some time in prayer. Oh, friends, right now we need Christians who are praying. This is part of the sound judgment that God gives us, is this desire to pray. Pray for our world, that God will use this pandemic, that he will use this pandemic to win people and bring them back to him, that that he'll call his church to to revival, that, that he will move in the hearts of people who have been far from God to ask deep questions. And pray that that happens. Would you pray for our national leaders and our state leaders? Pray for our local leaders. Uh, uh, just pray for all of them. Pray for Courtney Clark as she's our, our mayor here in Waukee and, and working really hard to, uh, to lead us well in this time. Uh, pray for our governor, Kim Reynolds. Um, pray for our president, Donald Trump. Pray for our our senators and all of our leaders. Pray for our local leaders that are here making decisions, people you don't even know their name, and they're trying to coordinate. Pray for them. Pray for our church body, for anyone you know who who is elderly, who is at risk in this time. And pray that God would be glorified in everything. And so take a few minutes to do that now. For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment.